Good morning and welcome to day 72 northbound on the Appalachian Trail. Here we go. We had a great night's sleep last night in the shelter. So happy to be in the shelter last night. I shared it with um, Wetfoot and his dad, um, Pack Mule, I think his name is. Um, anyway, we had a wonderful night in there because it rained for most of the night. And then at some point, I think it was early this morning, there was thunder and I didn't see lightning, but there was definitely thunder and the rain was coming down torrentially. So, and the people who tented, you know, they, they got a little splash, they got a little wet, but um, they were in good spirits this morning too. So um, the three men, um, well, the two men in Willow, they're heading southbound today and the father and son are heading northbound, maybe to the same campsite. We have a choice to do 9.5 or 16. And I think we're gonna shoot for the 16 since we only did 11 yesterday. Um, but you know, it felt good to get to camp early and um, just kind of chill out uh, for once, once in a while. <laughs> I can't do that every time, but um, it did feel good yesterday. Plus the weather was so strange. It actually never rained until the evening. Um, so I could have carried on further, but I, I'm glad I did what I did. So anyway, we're going to head to 16 miles today. It's the plan. And we did have a signal, albeit a uh, week, but uh, one of the men were able to tell that it looked like the biggest rain event has already passed. So there might be a little bit of a shower today, but for the most part, the big event is gone. So that delights me to no end. <laughs> um, yeah, so we are heading northbound as we make our way to Waynesboro in a few days. And um, temperature is about 55 degrees, so it's not too hot yet. It's, well, I wanted to get out of camp a little early, but it's, it's 8 a.m. That's not too bad. Um, yeah, and right now it's foggy and a little, definitely foggy, and I can't tell if it's overcast because of the fog, but I have a feeling all this is going to lift because, you know, me, I'm the eternal optimist here, especially when it comes to weather on the Appalachian Trail. Uh, so anyway, all right, enough of my blabbing. We're going to get on hiking and uh, we'll let you know as things progress up the trail. Hope you're all having a great Saturday, enjoying whatever you're doing, and uh, I will touch base with you later. All right, bye. All right, well, we've just been hiking along deep in the woods, and then we just came to a road crossing, and looks like we're going over another suspension bridge. Okay, Micah, up, up, up. Oh, this is cool. It's over a pretty, uh, pretty big river. Grateful to not have to ford this. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, we don't want to ford this. Uh, where would you even think? Yeah, that would be probably waste. Oh, I don't know. Even in the middle looks pretty deep. Anyway, don't have to think about that. Just look at the beautiful bridge and the, the, I mean the beautiful river and appreciate the beautiful bridge. Here we are, and it's just starting to drizzle a tiny bit, or maybe it's just the cloud. Ooh, yep, it's a suspension bridge, all right? We're rocking and rolling. <laughs> well, we're rocking, I don't know about rolling. Wow, really cool, thank you, Virginia. Thank you, I definitely did not want to afford that. <laughs> that would not have been fun. Okay, we're going this way, Micah. I just picked some wild strawberries, yum, yum. And uh, I'm looking for the mulberries because they're in season now. I did see some the other day when I was being picked up by the shuttle, but I couldn't pick any because the guy was, I didn't want to hold the people up who were waiting. So uh, I have my eye out for them. 
they were big and juicy. I thought they were blackberries, but they were mulberries, big and long and really purple. All right, and here we are going inside the forest again and the mountain laurel is in beautiful bloom. You ready, Micah? Here we go. So sorry, you're probably so sick of all this mountain laurel, but I'm just in awe. I'm just hiking along this trail and it's everywhere. These are bright white. I've been mostly hiking around pink ones, which are beautiful too. But these white ones are so pretty too. I'm just, I'm just in awe. They're everywhere. And it's just this huge mountain laurel explosion, especially with the rain and the sun and the warm weather. They're loving it. And so am I. All right, we ready to go, Micah? We're just hiking right. along and we came upon this reservoir to our left of the trail. And there's a dam there. Um, all my app says is that it's a reservoir. I don't know the name of it though, uh, but it's a huge body of water. Very cool. And as you can see, we're still kind of socked in, but no rain, humid, little, little foggy, but actually the cool temperatures are nice. Mike is enjoying it and so am I. <laughs> okay, so we come upon this river crossing. Uh, doesn't look too bad. Looks like I could rock hop right there. Right? Boom, 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 boom. Right over there. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put my phone away because rock hopping with a phone in your hand is not a good idea. And let's see, Michael will probably take the same route. Uh, one of the things you want to do when you um, cross the river like this, so this rock isn't bad, but as I come towards where the tide is rushing, you want to have your foot in the direction of it, so not not that way. You want to have your foot this way. It was ve if it was very deep, I would undo my pack, uh, just sort of the waist belt, so that I wouldn't get out of balance, but this is not deep, so I can handle this. All right, here we go. We're on the other side. Micah actually took a little bit of a higher route, um, but we got over quickly. Right, Micah? I should always follow you. You know the easiest way, usually. All right, up we go. So we have about a mile before we get to Brown Creek Shelter, which is where we're gonna stop for lunch. We're not going to stay there tonight because that'll only be nine miles and it's early. So we're gonna keep going. Um, but you know, I was thinking about why the trail is relatively quiet this weekend. And that's because it's trail days. This weekend is trail days. And if those who know about it, you can skip ahead. Um, but what Trail Days is, is a big celebration in Damascus, Virginia, um, and which is Trail Town, USA. And um, it's a big celebration to celebrate the uh, Appalachian Trail. And um, people come from all over, speakers. So it's the weekend, it's today and tomorrow. Um, people come to speak uh, who are part of the long distance hiking world. Uh, a lot of vendors are there and a lot of hikers, uh, alumni, people, and then current, current hike, you know, hikers will be there. Uh, there's a big parade through town where they hold a sign that has, you know, their year, you know, class of 2023 or class of 2019. And you get together with your family or some of the people that you uh, were able to hike with that year. And it's a big celebration. Um, there were signs in some of the hostels, uh, memos that basically said, uh, you know, let's fill the buses. They were trying to get you know, buses, which I'm sure they got plenty of people to go, uh, because logistically, you know, like I'm, I'm, I don't know, much further North than Damascus right now. So I would have had to get on a bus or a shuttle to drive me to Damascus, spend the weekend, find a place to stay, which is probably difficult because tons of people are around. Um, and then another shuttle to get me back. So I decided to not go and that's okay. I mean, I, I'm not disappointed at all. I think maybe in previous years I'll go 
as an alumni, God willing, when I finish this uh, trail, but even people who don't finish, they go just to be around the community and say that they were a part of the class of 2020, whatever, or 20, you know, whatever class they were involved with, uh, even if they didn't finish. So they want to be around some of the people that they hiked with. So uh, maybe in the future, I'll take a trip to uh, Damascus, Virginia. And uh, that would be really fun to do with my Oliver, where we could do the Roan Highlands and the, uh, the Grayson Highlands, see the ponies, and combine that with uh, trail days. That would be super fun. Anyway, so we're just gonna mosey on. The rain has been very kind. It got very dark there a few minutes ago and I thought, uh-oh, but uh, it just spit for a few minutes. Didn't even put the umbrella up. Didn't even put my rain jacket on. We have our pack covers on just in case, but uh, so far the rain has been very kind. The weather has been kind. So uh, we're gonna mosey on to the shelter, have a quick lunch, and then we'll continue on. Uh, but really the weather's been, it's been great. It's been cooler and uh, not as humid, although now actually it's been pretty humid, but it's just not, you know, it's not real hot. So Micah is very happy and uh, so am I. All right, we'll check in in a few minutes. Bye. This is Brown Creek and we have to uh, ford this. Uh, two options over here to the left or all those rocks to the right. I'm actually gonna go to the left because I think that is a better choice. Nah, maybe not. Uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna go to the right, right there. No problem, it was fun. No slips, the poles are great, they really help. All right, we're going on. I'm hungry for so lunch. This is a little plaque I came across. It says, memories of the Brown Mountain Creek community. As you traveled north along the next 1.4 mile section of the Appalachian Trail, watch for the remains of an abandoned community. Freed slaves built and lived in the small farm community in the early 1900s. 1900s. The memories and insights into the life on Brown Mountain Creek came from a former resident, Mr. Taft Hughes, during an oral interview with the Forest Service. The homes were small and the people hardworking. The food was simple but nourishing. Mr. Hughes remembered his mother's ash cakes, which were cooked on the hearth, covered with ashes and cold coals. Wow. Observe as you walk. Be aware that history surrounds you. Keep your eyes and mind open to explore the secrets held by this land. Cool. When I stopped for lunch, um, I, eat my, I had my roll up and my salmon, and there's the wrapper because Micah got to eat some too, and he licks the inside of the wrapper too, but I'll, of course, clean that up. He also ate some kibble, and I'm drying out our pack covers for a few minutes while we're waiting here. Um, I also check my water supply. I have, this is half full, and I have another one of these. This is half full, and I have another one of these that is half full, and I just filled up the one that I drink, and I add some electrolytes. This is, um, supposed to be a salt dispenser, but I use it for my electrolytes that I keep in my little uh, fanny pack. And right now I'm using liquid IV. The two electrolytes that I like the best is liquid IV and um, Gatorade. Those are the two that uh, work for my stomach. A lot of people like Element, uh, but that's a too salty for me. It has proven to give me terrible stomach cramps, so I stay away from that. And none, N-U-U-N, doesn't work for me either. So I just stick with the ones that work for me. So I just put a little bit of that in my water um, so that I have my electrolytes. And I'm gonna munch on a few um, nuts and seeds and cranberry trail mix. And uh, I've, already ate my, I've already eaten my roll up. And then we're gonna mosey on. We have about, um, we have about six more miles to go to get to the next shelter. It's probably six and a half with the walk into the shelter because it's 0.6 from the trail. So that's what we're going to do. It's really pretty. I've just been 
I left the shelter and, uh, for lunch and now we're just walking north and just along this creek, this uh, brown, brown creek. It's just so beautiful, it's making such a beautiful sound. So we are going to be climbing very soon. So I think this is probably the last I'm going to be seeing of the creek, but it's been really, really delightful walking along beside it. This is more about the living along the Brown Mountain Creek and the community. Um, it talks about uh, that there was a grist mill in the community that ground corn to make cornmeal. The sharecroppers paid Joe Davis, the mill owner, one eighth of their corn in payment for grinding their corn. The community was disabled in the early 1920s when they sold their land to the Forest Service. Well, we just crossed the Blue Ridge Parkway in an area and there's some trail magic here. It says help yourself. And there is um, some oh, apple juice or fruit punch. There's some apples. Ooh, I'm gonna have an apple. Oh boy, does that look good. Uh, sorry about the bad photography. Um, wow, you know what? Yeah, I'm not going to take a fruit punch because I don't want to have the garbage. But there's another one over there. Wow. Okay. Well, let's see. So generous. Whoever did this, thank I you. I also left some water and a bag here to put trash. These are rolls, Chex Mix, bags of Chex Mix. Oh, my goodness. That's so nice. Well, I'm going to help myself to an apple. Uh, yeah, wow. And I'll leave my trash here, which was nice of them to allow us to do that. Wow, so generous. I am on the summit of Bald Knob, although it's really not bald. Um, and in the distance, you see Mount Pleasant. <laughs> well, that's what we're supposed to be seeing, but we're at 4,000 feet. And as you can see, the fog is obstructing my view. <laughs> I've been climbing for miles. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's been like a, um, like a jungle. It's been very humid, very green, very beautiful, but no view and I can't wait to find out what Micah rolled in. But when we get to the shelter, we will find out because there's, thank God he's got a pack cover on because it is filthy and it doesn't smell too good. So I don't know what he rolled in, but we'll find out. <laughs> anyway, we're heading down to the shelter and now. We made it to Camp Cow or Cow Camp <laughs> shelter. And as you could see, we're totally socked in. Um, I met um, Homemade on the trail nice guy, um, uh, teacher on sabbatical. And I just met Miss Frizzle, who was sitting right here. She, they're, she's tenting and he's tenting, but I think I am not gonna tent. I am gonna stay in the shelter tonight um, and see if anybody else comes. But um, I just don't trust this weather, even though the last forecast I said, said there wasn't gonna be any rain tonight. But um, I don't know. I'm just going to just trust that um, it could rain. So we're going to just set up in the shelter. That's what we're going to do and just keep it simple. And whatever Micah rolled in, I have taken care of. I washed his pack cover in the river downstream, of course, and I washed him. <laughs> so I don't know what the heck he rolled in, but it didn't smell very good. But now he smells better. All right, hope you all had a great Saturday.